Hello everyone, my name is Ian, uh, and we are going to be talking today about TypeScript imports and how to make them look nice. Uh, we're going to do a quick sort of refresher on uh, import declarations, what they are, and, uh, and what's valid, what isn't valid. The benefits of why you might want to use type-only imports, and some ways to organize them and sort of have a consistent style in your imports. So let's talk about import declarations. We're not talking about this. This is a dynamic import statement or expression. Uh, we are instead talking about this ugly mess that you might have at the top of your uh, TypeScript files. And they come in a few different flavors. So there's named imports. Uh, if you have a file foo.ts, maybe there's a bar and a baz export. These are named, and so you have to use the same names in the curly braces when you import them. Uh, you can also sort of group those up into a namespace. Uh, so in this case, you know, you've, you've import star as foo, and then you can do foo.bar and foo.baz. It's the same thing as before, but you don't have to you know, use all the names in the curly braces. You use the star instead. Or you can have a default import. Uh, so maybe foo.ts has an export of uh, you know, default foo. It's, each file can only have one default export at most. Uh, Notice you can rename them. I hate default exports because of this reason. They get very confusing if you name them differently than the way they were sort of like intended. Uh, so I, I tend to avoid them, uh, but uh, different strokes, I guess. Quick question on, on that. Yeah. Does TypeScript have a way of uh, auto-completing default exports? Is that another reason they suck? I don't know. That's a good idea. I thought for sure you'd be the guy that knows. No. I've always wondered, like... I don't use them. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, I, have, I have an ESLint rule set up to make sure I don't. I also don't use them, so maybe that's, yeah. maybe that's yeah. why I don't know. Uh, it's also type-only imports. Uh, so in this case, you, know, you can export a type instead of a value from your, uh, from your TypeScript module. And you use this you know, import type syntax. Uh, this was introduced in TypeScript 3.8. Uh, and then there's kind of a very similar thing where you move the type into the uh, curly braces there and put it on the specifier directly. Uh, and that was added in TypeScript 4.5. And, uh, and, and we'll see some reasons you might want to use that. So let's do a quiz to see if uh, we think that various sort of combinations of these styles are valid or not. And we'll start off pretty easy. So. Here you have a default import mixed with a named import. Is this valid? Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. That's right. Good job. All right. Uh, another fairly easy one here. You have a, a type only top and inline. Valid? Well, why not? I don't know. It's redundant, but like, okay. No, it doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, why would you do that? That makes no sense. Uh, yeah, that doesn't that doesn't work. All right, named and type only. Say, it, say it, yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes. Okay, that does work. Uh, types at four point five and above with that with the, with that caveat. But yes, that's fine. All right, a default import and a namespace. I'm not so sure about this one. You th I, I hear one yes. Yeah, that works fine. So you might have, so, so the, the namespace import pulls in all the named uh, exports, and then you might also have a default that you want to grab as well. So you can do that just fine. So, so capital foo, capital F foo dot default is the same as lowercase foo? Yeah. But, but what if you have an export named default? Is that not allowed? You cannot name it default. It's a reserved, yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. All right, a namespace and a named value. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. No, can't do that. Because I, I think, so I don't really know. My theory is it's a little bit ambiguous. Like, would bar also be in foo? Or would you expect it to be like excluded from foo if you've done it this way, right? So. You can do them on separate lines, though. You can do, you can do them on separate lines, yeah. yeah. You just can't do them in one statement. Uh, how? Uh, no, you can't do them the opposite way either. So, so the 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 namespace always sort of, yeah, 
you can't do it. Uh, how about a default type only? Yes. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, you can. So this comes in handy um, maybe for like classes. So classes have a value. They can be used as a value or as a type. Uh, so you might export a default class and then only really want to use its type in your file that you're importing it into. How about a default type and a named value? Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I kind of had to just go through and be like, oh, I wonder if this works, and like put it into the type for play. No, that doesn't work. Um, that was called out explicitly in the uh, uh, PR from, from Andrew Branch when he sort of like added this, was uh, it's ambiguous, right? Like, does the type apply to the bar? Because you can have, like if you took out the foo, right, that's just a type bar. So like it's a little bit ambiguous and instead of sort of like deciding on something, they just said, no, nah, you can't do that. All right, last one, type only namespace. Yes, that works fine. So you can have multiple, just like you can have values, right? You can have multiple types being exported from a file, and then this will group them all up into a uh, type namespace. So congratulations. Give yourselves a hand. Uh, so why would you want to use these type-only imports? For one thing, they're guaranteed to be removed or elided. They, they like to use fancy words for this. Uh, from the generated output. So when you're, when you're creating JavaScript from your TypeScript, the compiler will know, oh, this is being imp imported as a type, so I can get rid of this whole you know, import statement. It won't show up in your JavaScript. Uh, it also can help out what are called isolated module uh, compilers, like, like ESBuild or Babel. TypeScript, when it's compiling and, and generating your JavaScript, like it has access to all of the files. So it can go and look at the things and see, you know, if you haven't included a type keyword, is this thing a type, is it a value? And then it can like make decisions based on that. Uh, most other compilers do not do that though. They just take one module at a time and turn it from TypeScript into JavaScript. So if you have something where it can't tell based on the usage, whether it's a type or a, or a module, it'll leave it in and it'll end up in your generated code. Uh, so, so if you use a type keyword, like it's, it, it knows then. And then like most importantly for me, I just find it a lot clearer when I'm looking at the imports to see whether it's a type or a value. You know, as a TypeScript developer, you're always kind of like of two minds when you're developing, right? You're thinking of the runtime code and you're also thinking of the type layer. And, uh, and, and at least for me, it's nice to sort of like know off the bat, looking at the top of the thing, like how is this import being used in this file? So I would argue that like consistency in this is key because if you do it sometimes, you don't do it other times, that's kind of like mixed messages. You know, you might say, oh, I, I see that the type keyword isn't being used on this import, it must be a value, but if you're not being consistent about it, like maybe that's not the case. Uh, but I'm lazy, so I want it to be done sort of automatically, right? I don't want to have to think about all of this and like make sure I do it the right way. And you can use ESLint rules for the most part to, uh, to enforce this. <laughs> we have a fan. And we have a, a friend of Michigan TypeScript, I would say, Josh Goldberg, has a great blog post on the uh, TypeScript ESLint blog, sort of like explaining uh, kind of <laughs> all of this talk, essentially. Uh, so if you want more details on, on kind of like uh, what I'm talking about right now, uh, that's a great blog post to, uh, to go explore. Uh, but just sort of like as a summary, uh, you, there's these rules here, consistent type exports and consistent type imports. I said those backwards, but uh, those sort of just make sure that if, if you're using a type, that you use the type uh, keyword in your import. And one nice thing about this is it's also auto-fixable. So if you haven't been consistent and you want to be, uh, you can just turn on this rule, run it, and like let it fix everything, and, uh, and then you'll be in good shape. But then you can also decide, do you want that type keyword like outside of the curly braces or on each thing on the inside of the curly braces, right? And there's an import plugin for ESLint uh, with a consistent type specifier style rule that will enforce one or the other you can choose. Uh, so yeah, this is what I'm talking about here. Like you can put the type on the import, you know, uh, 
on, on the specifier or on the outside. Uh, there are some, uh, some interesting differences in what might be generated between these two, and I'll get there in just a second. So TypeScript itself can also help us out here. Specifically, there's a uh, verbatim module syntax in TypeScript 5.0 uh, that was added that, like, first of all, enforces the use of type when, when it's possible. Like, if you're using, if you're importing a type, it'll error and like make you put that type keyword there. Um, I still think those ESLint rules are nice because like you can do those first and like auto fix everything and then turn this on and not have to manually like go through and fix all the syntax errors that it throws. Uh, it will also make sure to, to elide or drop everything with a type modifier in the final output. Uh, so this is kind of what I was talking about before. If you have this type on the outside, it's sort of like the top level, it knows everything in this import is a type, so I might as well just get rid of the whole import statement entirely. If it's on the inside, though, it'll leave the import statement in your JavaScript. So if you have side effects that are running in that module, those will still execute. So that could be something to keep in mind and if you're deciding on like which format you want to use uh, with verbatim module syntax specifically. Uh, this also sort of like combines or replaces some other uh, flags that existed previously in, in TypeScript. So you can kind of get the same thing even if you're not using TypeScript 5.0 uh, through a mix of these, these uh, you know, imports not used as values, preserved value imports, and isolated modules. Uh, and one thing to note is that there is some common JS interrupt considerations, like it won't generate require or uh, module.exports statements if you're using this flag. Uh, and generating uh, common JS, for example. You have to use like a, a different uh, uh, syntax. Uh, there are some great docs on the TypeScript site though for verbatim module syntax, so I'd suggest checking that out. And then lastly, a little bit of uh, shameless self-promotion here. I have a prettier plugin uh, that can also help with some of this. Uh, it will sort of like sort and organize your imports, and I'll just run through a few of the ways it does that. It, it uses a regex-based ordering. So in this specific example, like maybe you always want uh, imports from React to be like the very top thing. And then maybe like types from your third-party modules after that. And then maybe, you know, the actual third-party modules. Maybe you like want a little space to sort of like separate out your code from third-party stuff. Uh, and then your types, your like local types. Maybe you're using aliases for some of your stuff, like you know, add API, at components, at hooks, whatever. Uh, you can have that sort of like grouped to one spot. Then everything that's not CSS, and then any like CSS if you're using CSS modules or whatever. Um, so that's that's like an example of the kind of thing you can do. Uh, one of the differences from you know my package from some of the other uh, prettier plugins out there is it will preserve the side effect import order. Side effects are kind of tricky because a lot of times they're doing things like uh, impacting the global state, right? Uh, because you're not taking anything from that module, you're like running it and expecting it to do something. And if you're uh, you know, doing that, um, like for example, for CSS, if you're sort of like using that to get CSS into your components, you know, the order that you import them in will impact the cascade. And like the cascade in CSS is important, you know, which which uh, selectors come before others. So, so in this example, you know, we have uh, EFDBA, and then if you run it, like it'll sort the top ones, so DEF, and then it kept C where it was because that's a side effect, and then AB. So it'll sort of like rearrange around those side effects, but not move things uh, above or below. It will also combine type and value imports. So if you have, you know, if maybe you were using TypeScript 4.4, and you couldn't combine them before, and, uh, and, and you've moved to 4.5, and you want to sort of like simplify those, you can run it and it'll just put them inside for you. It won't look to see if, you know, if React Node was a type if you didn't have the type uh, specifier to begin with, right? Um, so it, it's not smart in that way. It doesn't like go and inspect the actual variables. But if you've got it marked as type, it can combine them. Uh, or if you want to sort of like go the other direction, it can split everything apart, and maybe you want to keep all your types, you know, separated like I showed sort of before. So here, you know, it's got the third-party types up at the top, and then the actual third-party values, a space, and then your local types and your local values. Uh, and we just released a version four uh, about a week ago, 
that sort of simplified a lot of things. There's some better defaults. It's easier to get started. Fix some comments. Comments are really tough to deal with when you're like moving AST nodes around and like, well, is this a comment, you know, a trailing comment on this one or a leading comment on the other one? Or maybe you've got pragma or whatever up at the top and you want to leave that. So uh, uh, Frederick Bartholomew is the other sort of maintainer on this project. He did a lot of work to sort of make this uh, <laughs> robust and, and work well. So what did we talk about? So, uh, you know, we sort of wanted to find some ways to save, your, save yourself some work, make your code look good, make it easy to jump in and sort of like understand what's being used in your files. Uh, TypeScript, you know, allows and, and even encourages you to use this type uh, modifier on your imports. Uh, you can, if you'd like, you know, specify or uh, you know, enforce a consistent import style using ESLint rules this verbatim module syntax from, from TypeScript itself, and my Prettier plugin. Any questions? So you're, are you a dog person? Don't have dogs, <laughs> I like dogs, and I found some Unsplash images that all seem to work well. Uh, so first off, your plugin is awesome. I use it on every project. Yeah. Um, some of my coworkers actually found it separately, and I was like, oh, I know that guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> But one thing that seems different about it than Prettier is Prettier is dogmatic about <laughs> uh, not being configurable, and it seems like yours has a lot of configuration. Is there a reason why you took that approach? Yeah, so, so uh, this was a fork of a Trivago plugin originally, uh, and, and you know, the, the main reason that I forked it off was because it was reorganizing my CSS and screwing up my styles, and I didn't want that. So I yeah, um, worked with someone else who actually had a PR that they uh, merged and then reverted because they didn't want that. And I was like, why wouldn't you want that? So I forked it. Um, and so that's kind of how it started. It had a ton of options and configurations. Uh, and then so this ver version four that we just released, I think limited it down to like three. So there's the main you know, array of order, uh, uh, you know, import order or whatever it's called to like specify how you want it to look. Um, you can specify your TypeScript version, and that's how we know whether we can combine things or not. So if it's 4.5 or above, we can like use those inline types. Um, otherwise, we, we don't do that. Um, and then there's one other option for uh, plugin, um, uh, plugins for the parser. So it uses Babel under the hood to, to, to parse the AST and, and do all the rearranging. Um, and if you're using, like, for example, experimental decorators or things like that, like we try to be smart about which pl uh, part, you know, pl uh, prettier, not prettier, Babel plugins to apply, but sometimes you have to configure those. So those, those are, are the only three. Do you have an option for, so like you're able to detect, w you know that there's a side effect if you're just doing like import string, because like why else would you do that if it's not a side effect? But sometimes you can have side effects in files where you are importing a specific thing. Do you have an option where you can say, Hey, I know you're not going to know these are side effects, but you can specify that they are. Yes, you can use a prettier ignore statement, and that'll work the same way as a uh, as a side effect import. So it, it won't rearrange across a prettier ignore. Uh, this is be similar to a question I had for a previous speaker. So, um, one of the videos I've seen on YouTube before about like how to not to do the over enterprising of code it had a very interesting take, which was. It, it was it was a Java thing, but it was basically always use namespace imports because that way you, you can actually like read the import code. Like a lot of times, if you have like import all these individual things, it becomes really difficult to read through and see what all the code is actually using just at a glance. I'm curious what your opinion on that take would be because I, I I can definitely see at least something in the web space that would heavily sacrifice efficiency of the actual imports what you're what you're trying to do when you're importing individual things at a time yeah i guess my my you know, my gut reaction would be i would worry about like tree shaking of those namespaced imports um, some tools do a better job than others at that um, rollup does a really excellent job usually at the cost of memory pressure um, webpack is i've had trouble with it in the past um, you know, and, and even apart from, from those, like if you're uh, in development, um, you know, if you're using a tool like Vite and you're using a namespace import, I have to imagine, unless it, so I don't know off the hand if, if it's uh, doing anything smart to sort of like look to see how it's being used and tree shake it like in development. I don't think it does. So it's probably just gonna request all of those 
Um, similar to, like, I don't like to use barrel imports. Like, if you use a you know, index.ts and have just sort of like everything re exported from one file, that's another case where you can end up with a lot more browser requests than you intended because you know, all of those get imported and then you sort of like end up importing your entire app instead of just what you wanted. That's my off the cuff response. Um, I like sort of the, and, and especially nowadays when there's such good uh, auto import, right? You can just kind of like, auto, you know, use the, the name that you, you know you want in your code and then it'll just like automatically throw it up in your, in your, uh, yeah. your imports. Yeah, we, we have a coworker who was a Java land guy who wrote and uh, like a VS Code index plugin that generates those barreled imports from f certain folders, and I'm going to need to go back and and remove all of that because <laughs> uh, I, I definitely see what you're saying of like, yeah, I would much rather have the tree shaking and have the final app be optimized than than that problem. Yeah, yeah. And the topic of barrel imports. So like, if I have a like a I like with, what I like with the barrel imports is I'm able to think of a folder as like a module or as a package, and I, I may have a lot of stuff in there. I want to split it up over multiple files. Like this is strings.ts, it yes. does string stuff or whatever. And I may have things that I want to export for the, from those files to be used by the other files within that folder, but I don't want to be exported elsewhere. How do you control that like exports for within that folder, but not out? Does that make sense? Like, why I want them to be private from consumers of this folder and everything within there. Okay, yeah, I would say if, if that's what you're looking for, um, probably what, what I would reach for would be the uh, package.json exports uh, map. This is like within a project, so like I have like a folder for like a component. Yeah, there's no way, like. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Because <laughs> I feel because I feel shamed for using index files right now. So, but. <laughs> so I, 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 I'm a little bit pragmatic about it. So if there's a, a group of exports that I know are usually all used together, like yeah, I'll, I'll use a barrel file for those. Um, I think where you can get into big trouble is like assets or uh, icons is another case where like it sort of is very tempting to put all of your icons into sort of like one file or whatever. And I've worked places where like a big chunk of the bundle size was icons and like only one or two was actually used in this particular, you know, interface. But it was importing hundreds of them because they were all in the same file. So, or, or you know, the same thing with a barrel would do the same thing if it wasn't tree shaken. Um, so I think you know a few is probably fine. It's just uh, trade-offs and sort of like usability and, and file size. Thanks for making me feel better. <laughs> All, right. All right. Any other questions? All right. Thank you.